Okay, in this video here, I'm just going to work with how, um, how to draw things onto a page and make it fit. And to do that, you are going to need to decide on a scale factor. So um, here I've got two objects. I'm just going to work with two to, so you can get the point. Uh, ideally, we want to draw something that views from above. So this would be the boundaries of the floor. Um, and then obviously I have my like table object somewhere in there. But the question is how big... How, how, to, how to represent that on a page. Now, uh, diagrams are pretty useless when they are just far too tiny for you to make any sense out of what they are and what, uh, what each piece is. Um, so um, generally, it's frowned upon to have a diagram that is way too small. So the best we can look for, the best that we want to strive for is to make our diagram as large as possible. Now, how large? Well, that has to fit on the piece of paper you're working with. So you could, if you still have it, if you still have um, one of your exercise books for maths, you know the ones we had this grid for? Yeah, you could probably use one of those, or you might be able to find some paper that would be able to do the job. Uh, I guess you could probably do the same thing on regular piece of paper, and you just have to sort of um, line things up with a ruler. But uh, you just got to go to figure out, like, well, how do I show, how do I show this room um, on this grid? Okay, so I've chosen gridded paper for this tutorial, and um, I'll just walk you through the process that I that I've been using. I I don't know if it's the, I don't I wouldn't say it's the most efficient way, but it is a method you could use. So if you have a different math teacher in a different classroom, so if you're a student from somewhere else. Um, you're welcome to uh, hear my perspective and then hear your teacher's perspective and you do um, the best of both. Um, so here I'm looking at the largest thing after fitting the page would obviously be the room. So this object here would be the largest thing. So therefore I need to make sure it fits. And um, how you make it fit will depend on which way you're going to hold. Like if you got like a bedroom that is like this shape, uh, you will have a different answer than if you, than a student who has a bedroom that's this shape uh, in terms of the scale, okay? So to determine the scale, uh, I've used this grid here. So um, you could use centimeters or you could find out these little grid boxes for yourself. So here uh, you can see all these little, little dots. I've actually counted that this thing here is 36 boxes from left to right. So I need to figure out how to make things fit. So effectively, I, I need to get the longest dimension of my bedroom, which would be this dimension here. I need to somehow fit that into 36 boxes. So let me just do that. So uh, uh, 36 boxes divided by 5.4 meters. Okay, I'm gonna use the units here just to communicate clearly. Okay, so if I could do this division um, then I would effectively get some amount of boxes per meter, okay? Um, if I could do that, if I could do that division. Currently, I can't, to, uh, at least by hand, um, because I can't, I can't, I couldn't think of a way to simplify uh, the, dom uh, the fractions such that the denominator becomes a single digit for me to do short division. I just couldn't figure out how to do that. Uh, I tried dividing top and bottom by two, and it doesn't really help, because if I try that, if I divide top by two, I get, so uh, let's see, half of 30 is 15, 15 plus half of six, 18. Half of five is two and a half. Uh, five plus two is seven. Okay, so uh, this doesn't really, uh, make the denominator into a single digit. And I don't really see any course of action, at least not a, an easy one. So after uh, I realized this is not going to lead me anywhere, um, what I, I tried next is uh, rounding it up because you don't have to, I don't have to make my bedroom fit exactly all the way from here to here. I, I wouldn't mind if it comes in just a little bit. It's still, as long as it fits most of the space. So what I thought about is uh, if I rounded this number, if I rounded it up, so let's round this up to a six meters, okay? So if I can make six meters fit in the bounds of here, then surely 5.4 meters would fit somewhere 
in the middle and it'll still fit on my page. So that's what was I thinking. I, I rounded the number up. Okay. Um, and now if I put it through, uh, it just so happens. Now I didn't I actually completely chose these numbers at random. It just happened to be a stroke of luck that things work out here beautifully. So 36 divided by six, well, that just gives me six boxes per meter. So now I've got a scale factor. Let me just highlight that. This is my scale factor. So one, six boxes is to one meter. So I might say, I might have to state that somewhere. Let me just get rid of this because this doesn't help me. I'm just neaten up my page here so I can make room for my working. So my scale factor is going to be six is to one, where this is boxes and this is meters. Okay. And you would present this somewhere on your, uh, your diagram. And along the way, I'd like to see some calculations so that I can see you've done the maths to do this. So um, I need to figure out, well, how many boxes is it going to take to draw out 5.4 meters? Okay, so let's do that math there. So um, the room, I'll just put a little heading here. The room, it is, let's say the length. The length is uh, 5.4 meters. And I want to multiply that against my scale factor here, which is six boxes per meter. So that is six boxes per meter. That's just another way of showing this. This and this is exactly the same thing. I've just, because um, you know, this symbol here means uh, divide, all right, or slash or fraction. That's all I've done here. I've just converted it into the form that's going to be the most helpful. So here I, I can do my math tricks. Let me just backtrack here to clear out my view. I could use my math tricks where to times uh, a whole number by a fraction. I just make them both into fractions by putting a one underneath there. And then I can cancel out uh, diagonally. So meters and meters cancels out. So uh, the maths of this thing here becomes 5.4 times by six, all divided by one. This is just 5.4 times six. So. If I do some more calculation down here, so 54 times by 6. I'm just going to take away the decimal place and then stick it back on at the very end. So 6 times 4, I think, is 24. 6 times 5 is 30, plus the 2 I save, so 300. So it's going to be 32.4 boxes uh, to give me the length. I don't need this anymore, so I'm just going to delete that. Uh, the width of the room is uh, 3.2 meters. So 3.2 meters, and I'm just gonna repeat this process again. So 3.2 over one times by six boxes over one meter. And then we have the same uh, canceling that um, cross simplifying. So it's 3.2 times six. So uh, let's see if I can do that in my head. Six times two is 12. 6 times 3 is 18 plus the one I say that's 19. So I think it's that number there. And so that gives me the dimensions of the bedroom. Uh, let's see, does that all work out? I think so. So now if I want to draw it on this grid paper, my bedroom, let's see, I need to use 32.4 boxes I've got 36 boxes wide, so that means I could take in, I could probably take in, two, come in two boxes this way, which gives me 34 left. If I come in two boxes this way here, it gives me 32 boxes left. So I need to do, maybe just come in by two and only come in by one from this side here. So let's count them out. I need to go 30, I need to do 32.4, so almost like 32 and a half. Okay, so here we go. Let's start from, let's, I'm gonna start from, oops, not there. It'll be the corner of the retina. Right 
other dot. So half uh, one should end about there. So let me just draw a line. There we go. So it gives me the five, well, I don't even need to write 5.4 meters, but I will anyway, 5.4 meters. And now I want to do the width of the bedroom. So that'll be 19.2. Oops, I didn't like that very much. From there to there. Great. I'll do the same thing over here, which would be about there. Now, of course, I would expect you guys to do this with a ruler. Nice. So here's my 3.4, no, 3.2 meters. 3.2 meters. Now I'm going to, uh, th this gives me the uh, floor space of the bedroom and I'm just going to repeat the same process of scaling down this item here. So it's 90 by, you know what, because we're looking from above, I don't actually need the height of the table. That's not really relevant for this part of the maths. So here I'm going to um, look at these two numbers here. Obviously they are in centimeters, but I base my scale factor in meters. So I need to convert these. So zero. So this basically ends up being 0 0.9 meters, and this becomes 0 0.8 meters. And we're going to do the same scale factor math. So let me just do that. I've run a room here, so I'm going to do it here. So let's do the table. And so let's say width is, uh, let's say the 0 0.8 meters times by my scale factor. And then uh, you got the point where the units cancel out diagonally because it's a multiplication of fractions. Um, so now I've got 0 0.8 times 6. So 8 times 6, I think, is 48. Um, See, I don't, I don't trust my math, my 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 uh, times tables here. Let me go six, um, then I get to twelve, and then I get to eighteen, then I get to twenty-four, and then I just have to double that to get to eight. yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Forty-eight, yeah, yeah, okay. So forty-eight boxes is my width of that table, and then the length of the box uh, of the table is going to be zero point nine meters over one times by my scale factor again. And now I'm going to cancel out my like terms. So it's effectively 0.9 times by 6. And so trying to solve that in my mind, what's 9 times 6? 9 times 6 would be 54. So 54 boxes. Okay, so now I'm just going to put the, uh, the that table somewhere in this space. So I don't know, but somewhere really convenient, like the exact center of the room. <laughs> Uh, obviously you guys will shuffle the furniture into a space that makes sense. So 4.8, so we go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4.8. 8 is almost a full box, so maybe I'll go to about here. So I'm going to draw a line from there to there. Whoops, that didn't, didn't turn into a straight line. There we go. And the other dimension is 5.4 boxes. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Point 0.4 is almost half a box. Let me just put it about there. I'm going to draw my line here. And then if I want to be super fancy, I can copy this so that everything's exactly the same. Okay, so somewhere about there. And there's my table. And there I can, you know, move it around. Put it in a space that makes sense, like the exact center of the room, for example. And I can say table, so that when you present your floor plan, um, the teacher can actually tell what these little rectangles are. And maybe even on the table, you might still put in the dimensions. So that one there is, you know, 
90 centimeters by 80 centimeters. Okay, so you might still have those dimensions um, uh, written onto the diagram. Um, okay, so I can gather that you have a few questions. One question is, um, can't I just do this on a website that has floor plan sketches and, and diagram makers? And the answer is no. I, I realize that will be a, a very convenient tool to use. And you would very much, very, very likely use those in a real world context. Like if you actually had to design a bedroom, I'm sure you would use software to help you sketch out the floor plan. I understand. However, from the uh, maths assignment perspective, we want to be able to, um, we want to be able to uh, grade you based upon your mathematical skills. Now, if you use an online generator or, or an online um, sketch program, there isn't really any mathematical skills that are being applied and, and certainly none that we would be able to mark you on. So unfortunately, you will have to do this by hand, just like I did it over here. Obviously, I have this fancy program here that lets me sort of straighten out these lines. Um, but I, you will have to do these floor plans by hand on a piece of paper. Another question uh, that arises is, uh, do I have to show my working? Absolutely, absolutely. I want to, the more working I see, the better. So um, you might even, you might do, for example, a, uh, an example calculation like this. So it's shown in its full working. And then obviously if you have like a lamp and a, and a TV and, and a bookcase and you, you are going to be re repeating, you are going to be repeating this maths over and over and over again. And you know that uh, Microsoft Excel is an excellent program for repeating a calculation over and over again. So surely you could calculate, you could make a little um, spreadsheet that that takes all of the dimensions of length and width uh, of your different bedroom items and you could get the software, the, the Excel program to run the calculations and tell you exactly how many boxes that you would use and therefore you could apply that here. But the key thing is that I need, we as teachers, we need to see at least one full calculation of an object in your bedroom. So let's do like a, a, a room calculation and one furniture item and then you might have your spreadsheet which has all the other items calculated for you and therefore you draw them in. Um, I think that's all I can think of for now. I hope this gets you started. Um, keep in mind that my scale factor here of six to one, that that's not going to be, that's not going to work for you, okay, because this is entirely uh, dependent, oh oops, sorry, this scale factor is going to be entirely dependent on the size and the shape of your bedroom, um, and perhaps even the size of paper that you're working with. So if you have a if you have an A4 paper, you would have a different scale factor to somebody who has a A6 paper, all right? Because they have to make things fit in a smaller space, okay? Um, you might ask is, could I use an A3 piece of paper to draw my floor plan? Well, technically that you could, but I, I as a teacher would rather you didn't because I would like when you, when you hand in your assignment and you hand in your stack of paper, I want them all to be nice, nice and neat, stapled on the front uh, and they're all the same size. Now I realize that you could fold an A3 piece of paper in half, but it just ends up being a bit too much stress on this paper, on this staple here that you put in the corner of your assignment. Um, and I don't know, I'm just picky. So I would rather you stick to an A4 page and work with that challenge, okay? So it is a bit of a challenge to try and come up with your scale factor. Hope this video helps you guys. Once again, I'm sorry I couldn't be there because I'm still sick and I don't want to pass that on to you and I'm also not feeling the greatest either. I'll see you hopefully before the end of the week. Bye.